Paul and his son George, who is also a YouTuber. So this is Sven. Ferrari or Porsche-esque badge? That? Yeah, pr Prancing Moose. Prancing Moose. Yeah. Like a living room on wheels. Um, slightly bigger turbo. Then got the M3, had that on track. Turn it into the ultimate arrive and drive club sport track car. You know, when you get them on track, they really come into their own. Yeah. Because <laughs> every Volvo estate needs launch control, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Hello and welcome to this video. I'm Marcus Hayes, this is my beautiful girlfriend Kat, and today we've jumped in Roger, the plastic Fiesta, to head down to meet up with a guy called Paul and his son George. Now George has actually sent me clips of Maud, my Maud or Mark II Escort, in the past. He's actually got his own YouTube channel where he goes out and checks out car meets. I will leave links in the description to his YouTube channel and his social media. Definitely go and give him a follow. But today, we're going to check out a car that belongs to his dad, Paul, which actually isn't a Ford. So yeah, something a bit different, a bit of a break from the norm from the cars that are usually on this channel. But I've seen some pictures and Paul's been telling me all about it via email. It's a really, really cool car and I can't wait to get there and check it out. All right, so we're here with Paul and his son George, who is also a YouTuber. Definitely check out his channel. And they're standing in front of Paul's M3 track car, which we'll have a look at in a little while. But yeah, massive thanks to you both for inviting us down. Really nice to meet you. Yeah, and you too. Cheers for coming down. But yeah, before we have a look at the M3, let's have a look at Sven, <laughs> the estate Volvo. All right, so this is Sven, the 1998 940 Turbo. Absolutely mint for a 1998 car. Loving the banded steels that it's sitting on. These are actually Citroen 17 inch by seven wheels, which have been banded to 8J at the front and 9J at the rear. Loving the Ferrari or Porsche-esque badge, is that? Yeah, pr Prancing Moose. The Prancing Moose yep. <laughs> badge. But yeah, this thing is absolutely mint. You'll see the bike racks on the roof because uh, Paul likes to load the bikes up onto this thing and go for trips to the downs. There's the Instagram link for any of you guys that want to check out his Instagram. But yeah, what an awesome barge. Can't believe how mint it is for such an old Volvo. Got a stainless exhaust on it. And yeah, really, really cool stance. You said it's on coilovers, yeah? Yeah, gas golds on the rear and then a bit of a custom sort of classic Swede set up on the front. You've got to see the interior of this thing. It looks like a brand new car. So into the interior, check out all the wood on the doors and the dash and stuff. It does have a re-trimmed Momo steering wheel. And yeah, check out those seats. Like a living room on wheels. More wood in the center console there. And just look at the space in this thing. What an awesome thing. Love it. All right, so now we'll have a look at the heart of the beast where there's some uh, interesting bits going on. All right, so I remember from the email you sent me, this is a 2.3 eight valve turbo lump, right? Yep, that's it, yep. Nothing crazy, but it's the, obviously the sort of quite popular red block bottom end. So it's the B230FK engine. 
a valve head, bottom end and, and everything sort of internally is, is standard. It has got an uprated cam in it, uprated injectors which just come off a T5. Uh, Bosch injectors, I think about 350cc. Um, slightly bigger turbo, um, again off of a, like a T5R. Essentially still a small turbo in the grand scheme of things, but bigger than the, the standard one. And of course you up the boost a bit and um, yeah, you make like good gains. Um, so obviously you need a, a different boost controller. So it's got an electronic boost controller, which is which is inside with an electric solenoid out here. Cool. Um, uprated cam, it's got a V-cam, which is still a Volvo cam from a different engine, but both lift and duration yeah. um, are considerably better than like the standard original cam that, that would be in this engine. And fueling and ignition chips, um, so yeah, nothing, nothing horrendous. I've got a big like a whole set turbo at some point as a long-term sort of project to go in there, but that needs a different sort of tubular manifold. Uh, Are they the external. truck turbos that yeah, puts on yeah. everything? Yeah, they make big power, don't they? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> bit of a bit of a monster, but that's a long-term thing. I'll, yeah. I'll probably get pick up another bottom end and, and sort of build that up to bigger spec and forge that. And then yeah, we've got a, you know it's a standard air box, but it's got a pipe across sort of high-flown air filter inside it. Didn't want a cone filter because although they're a little bit louder, you end up with you know quite a lot of heat soaks, so you're better off sort of keeping the, the standard air box. And it still sounds good. Yeah, so um, it sounds like a pretty healthy spec. You say you haven't done yeah, much, so, but... Yeah, so I mean, considering... I mean, it, it started off as a, as a, an LPT model and a standard. They only had about 135 horsepower. Oh, really? Yeah, really sort of under, under, underpowered, really sort of conservative because the turbos were only running sort of three and a half PSI. And even oh really? The, that low? Yeah, 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 ridiculously low. And the high pressure ones ran double that, about seven psi, mm. and they they were made about 170 brake, 165. Uh, so now we've got that bad boy in there, and yeah, got it set up, and it's now running about 22 psi, 23. <laughs> so it's yeah, it's quite nice. The poor poor little turbos sort of screaming screaming out a bit, but. Um, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. The guys at Devil Developments, who I've used for years, they they set it up, and we, the clutch was slipping quite quite badly. So I've upgraded that with a TTV setup, which is a solid flywheel, a lightened flywheel, which makes it sort of really nice and and revy and sprightly, uh, combined with an upgraded clutch as well. So it's sort of bigger diameter, 240 mil as opposed mm. to 228, which I think the the original one is. So yeah, got it back to them. Managed to turn the wick up a bit with the boost. And um, yeah, it's like 250 and about 300 pound foot of torque. So, you know, it's not, it's not mental power, especially compared to sort of the newer cars, but... Still like double standard though. Yeah, it's still, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, back from when I used yeah, to oh, be yeah. into Cozzies and the RSs, you're always sort of chasing that next hike in power. Yeah, I'm used to it now, really do want it to be a bit quicker, mm. but it, it still is quicker than it looks, even though it is bit stancy people just expect it to be old and slow yeah yeah this has still got like the the standard open diff at the moment but i have got a modded lsd which is going to go in there at some point take it to drift days or i i the, the old <laughs> one i had clean. the it's old one clean. i had was definitely going to be a drifter because that that had a welded diff in the back but this one i i would like to take it and just maybe go in the playpen and just sort of yeah, spend yeah. you know spend a day in in the playpen but you touched on the fact that you are a ford man at heart or you was um in the past so yeah, tell us about your Ford car history. Yeah, I mean, st stemming, you know, my, my, my dad, he was he was a petrol head, always into his Ford sort of growing up, and he used to, you know, he had mod uh, modified, I think it was a Corsair that he sort of put a tasty engine in it at the time, so he was always into the old school Fords. And so when I, and then when I learned to drive, um, I just always wanted to go into the Ford RS scene, my first sort of fast car, which was my second car, um, growing up was, was a Series 2 RS Turbo, um, in red, which wasn't a great car, but I loved it. You know, they're they're they're, they're great cars, and, and even now, you know, I'll always always have a soft spot for them. And then moved on and got um, Cosy's two-wheel drive Sapphire Cosworths, and again, awesome cars, awesome fun. Um, and then I was sort of heavily involved in the RS Owners Club with the West Sussex Group. Um, met some really good friends. Really enjoyed my time there, like owning the the RSs. Um, then ultimately I wanted to sort of do a little bit more track orientated things, you know, have a bit more fun on track. Uh, and the car I had at the time, like the Mark 1 Focus RS, awesome car, really good on track, but I was a bit too precious, mm. you know, about yeah. it. I didn't really want to be taken on track. So that's why, I, you know, I then got the M3, had that on track. So it's a, a sort of club sport spec, so the idea is to take it out into Europe and that. Um, 
and, and just make it an ultimate arrive and drive track car. But I also wanted a bit of a retro daily. I had a friend who had a really nice silver Volvo. Um, yeah, I really liked that and I thought I'd pick myself up a cheap one. I picked up a blue one which was not as clean as I thought it was when I first had it, which was disappointing, but it was a really good, really good car. I sort of put the bigger turbo and exhaust and stuff on it and welded the rear diff. And yeah, I, I enjoyed driving it more as a daily car mm. than I thought I would, you know. And then my said friend who had the silver one was going to be selling it. It was a much cleaner shell. And I, um, yeah, I sort of bit his arm off when, when I knew I could have it. So I bought that, moved all the good bits over, sold the blue one on. And then, um, and yeah, the, the, the silver one is here, which is Sven. Oh, that's cool, man. And so, so you basically had this spec in the blue one. Yes. Um, so that was sort of mechanically sound, but not as mint as this one. Yes. And then when your friend wanted to sell this one, it was a no-brainer to build. Yeah, exactly, yeah. A good yeah. one out of the two, yeah. like. Yeah, the old one was a Cat C, you know, Cat C shell. It was an early one. It was just a bit ropey all round, whereas this is... Um, it's a Torslander or Celebration model, so it's the one of the very last off of the off the production line. And being a later one, it's got like the roof rails on it and the the, the better tailgate on the back. It's got the better interior, so yeah, it was an absolute no-brainer, and I'm I'm really chuffed with it. Definitely a keeper. Yeah, no, don't blame um, you, man. George wants it. <laughs> he wants it as his first car for sure. <laughs> no, cool, man. Cool story. It's you know a cool car's one thing, but. And it's got a cool story to go with it as well. That's that's, that's awesome. Um, do you want to show us the um, the launch control web limiter box or something you emailed me about? So this is for the launch control, right? Yeah, oh, well, it's, that box yeah. Over there. I mean, it all, it's very crude. All it, yeah. it's basically just a rev limiter. All right. Which has five different sort of speed settings on it, from from three up to six thousand RPM, and then a button to switch between soft and hard cut. And I've adapted it and put in a like a switch clutch switch or on the clutch pedal. Oh, wicked. To, to wire it in so that you can deactivate it when you you know when yeah. you when you release the clutch. That's cool. Um, so still still needs needs a couple of little tweaks, but yeah yeah it's all it's all right. It's just a it's just a bit of fun. Yeah. Really, more than anything. The ECUs on my cars they've got launch control function, but I've only ever had it on a button on the dash. Right. But I would like to sort of set it up so it's automatic on a clutch switch one day. So yeah, that um, that intrigues me. But um, yeah, before we do take the Volvo out for a rip. Let's have a look at Paul's really cool M3 track car. This is my E46 M3. Um, it's 2002, so one of the earlier ones. I didn't pay a lot of money for it back when sort of the, you know the value of them was low, like compared to now, especially. Um, yeah, totally standard. And then and then the idea was to just sort of turn it into the ultimate arrive and drive club sport spec track car. You know that's still very much usable on the road, but really really good on the track. I, I was doing sort of a lot more track based stuff with my old sort of Peugeot 205 GTI that I had. And I wanted to sort of move up a level with in terms of sort of power and size and ultimately go rear wheel drive. So I spent quite a lot of money on it, obviously doing the important things like the, the rear subframe, you know, so everything was stripped off underneath, I had the like the reddish sort of plates, reinforcement plates and everything done on the on the rear. Um, everything sort of stripped and powder coated underneath and then refitted with Super Pro bushes, uprated the suspension. Um, with Olin's front and rear, and then sort of Turner adjustable anti-roll bars, front and rear, custom adjustable drop links, um, adjustable camber arms on the back, upgraded the front brakes, so they're the sort of the, the big sort of AP uh, Pro 5000 R's with the BTCC rotors, which are the 368 by 36 mil rotors that come straight off of the BTCC circuit and running the same pads that you get off them as well. So the consumables that you go through, like like the tyres and the brakes, then become quite cheap. So um, I've got like a big old stack of rotors and they've all come off the BTCC circuit. They're really cheap uh, along, along with the pads. 
and then it allows you to use the BTCC slicks as well, like the 18 inch slicks and the racing wets and like a big pile of them over there. Interior wise, I wanted to sort of get rid of the back seats and get a, a half cage in the back so I could- Yeah, let's some... have a look at the interior actually. It's really- Yeah, I wanted to have some decent seats with, with decent harnesses. So Sparco seats, Schroth harnesses, sort of custom base mounts. And then the rear cage is the rear part of a uh, safety devices six point cage. So the idea being that ultimately if I wanted to develop it and put the front front section in I can um, but that's been sort of custom installed fractionally lower than it would normally be installed in the car so that we can retain the headlining um, it is a sunroof model which a lot of people don't like for on track because it's you know it's more weight and it does sort of limit your headspace if you want to put a cage in there but it is a you know a usable car I want to be driving out into Europe in to do track days and so it was sort of for me it's key to sort of try and retain as much of the interior as possible so the headline is still in there the stereo is still in there yeah you're saying that this is the sort of semi-automatic what's it called uh, SMG yeah SMG really yeah. cool carbon paddles on your carbon trimmed steering wheel yeah I know you even you were saying like a lot of the petrol heads and inverted commas will say that it should be a manual if I just wanted to keep it as a road car mm. then I would want a manual um, but when you get them on track, they really come into their own. Yeah. You know, and still essentially, it's still the same six speed gearbox. It's just the fact that the shifting's done via the actuator. Right. You still get that sort of nice, amazing mechanical, sort of agricultural feel and sound to it. Oh, okay. Um, and it's that I really like, like big, you know, big old clunks and, and, and stuff. And you said you like to chase Porsches and that on track, so. Yeah. So you, yeah. So <laughs> These are really good. You know, you, you spend money on the chassis, get them set up nicely to be able to run nice wide front tires with a lot of negative camber. And the front end is so grippy, it's, it's, it's insane. And they're, they're a really well balanced car. And uh, yeah, ch chasing Porsches and, and caterums is the order of the day normally for most track days. I know uh, this thing is like a lot of people's dream daily. And uh, yeah, you've got one as a track car. I know you said you bought it when they weren't as ridiculously priced as they are now but um, mm. yeah no i love it man all right so if it's all right with you can we have a passenger ride in this thing yeah absolutely let's do it yeah let's get a, get a warmed up and we'll go for a spin nice one they are really comfortable are actually really considering comfortable. what they are these front ones are, are heated as well they still work so you can <laughs> warm your Bum up <laughs> if you need to. What's this gizmo down here? That's the electronic boost controller. Oh, right. In you can keeping... basically turn the power up and down then, even though yes. it's a chip stock ECU. Yeah, that, that's like just that. linked to the, the boost solenoid, yeah. you know, which, which like controls the, the actuator for the turbos. It's set on sort of the high setting at the moment, and mm. you, can, you can adjust the peak boost and, um, and the gain. It feels really like smooth, doesn't it? Like dri driving normally, it's like. Yeah. I mean, I can feel that it's on coilovers, but yeah. they're not ridiculous. The fronts are the softest they'll go. Right. The rears are a few clicks off of the softest right. because they, if you get them, them too soft, then you end up with it, it really sort of bounces. Right. <laughs> Quite a lot of wind noise because the I had to have the, the windscreen changed. All right. And the and the top seal they didn't fit it back properly. Oh. And it's sort of yeah the the wind's getting underneath it. It's really bugging me. Would you have, have to the, remove the screen to do that correctly? No, it's just, it's just the trim that goes over the top. Oh, but okay. you can't you can't get hold of them anymore. So. All right. If anyone's got the trim that goes along the top of the windscreen for one of these old Volvos, definitely drop me an email. <laughs> Much appreciated. <laughs> That's the bad thing about old cars when you need that little part, you know. Yeah. I love the noises. It's not like ridiculously loud, like some, you know, modified turbo cars. It sounds, it sounds all right. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I, I don't mind loud cars. Obviously, don't get me wrong, but you know, this wouldn't annoy anyone. Like. No, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's all, it's all for me. I, I have actually got like a rear box delete pipe, okay, which which effectively turns it straight into a like into a straight through because yeah. then it doesn't have any silencers on it at all. 
which um, George is really wanting me to put back on there, <laughs> but it, it is <laughs> so loud, and the pops and bangs are, are, are ridiculous. But. <laughs> so you were saying before that when you bought this off your mate, it already had the coilovers on it, um, different set of wheels. So it was already on the way to being a modified car. Like, yes, it was quite sort of heavily modified when he had it, and then he was going to break it um, and, and sell it as a rolling shell. Right. And then I sort of persuaded him just to sell, like to sell it to me as a standard car, but with the coilovers. Yeah. Um, so it had the standard wheels on it, and uh, yeah, and then I moved all of the sort of the, the nice bits across from my, from my blue one. Yeah. And these these wheels that I had banded, they were silver on the blue car. Oh, um, these are on the, the blue car. These banded. Yes. Silver. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. So I moved them across as well, but but painted them black, you know, because yeah. because they you know black would suit this no, it this car. Does suit it. Um, so yeah, they sort of gloss black and I think they look pretty good. You've got the yellow calipers just sort of sitting behind them, which you don't really see, but you get a bit of a, yeah. you know, glimpse of them every now and again, which look look, look pretty cool. What brakes has this car got on it? Is it all stopped? Like we didn't talk about it before. Completely stopped. <laughs> they work? Yeah, they're, they're all right. I'd imagine a car like this, like, would have been a luxury car back in the day. They would have been over-engineered anyway. You know what I mean? like, yeah, yeah. But, brakes uh, only slow you down anyway. You know? All right, so we've um, driven into a Mexican industrial estate. <laughs> Paul's going to show us the launch control on this beast. Yeah. Because <laughs> every Volvo estate needs launch control, right? Absolutely, absolutely. I'll just show you the like the hard cut setting, which is meant to be like the slightly loudest one, but you don't launch with it. Right. All right, should we go for when you're ready? Soft mate. cut. <laughs> I'd be doing it off every red light, I would. <laughs> it's quite addictive. <laughs> so normally, well, I normally try and choose a Sunday to have a, have a play <laughs> because you end up with all these units and everyone's sort of poking their heads out. And, they don't work Sundays in Mexico, no? No. No. No, they don't, as it turns out. Smart people. They are, aren't they? Unfortunately, we had a bit of a microphone malfunction during this clip, but before we left, George agreed to make some noise and give us a demo on his drum kit. Well, what an absolute pair of legends Paul and George are. Proper petrol heads, and George is definitely a bit of a wizard on the drum kit. I'm hoping that I'm gonna be able to get myself a drum kit one day. <laughs> now, how cool is that Volvo estate? I remember I used to have a Volvo 340 back in the day, but um, yeah, that's my only experience of having a Volvo. But yeah, that thing's awesome. Absolutely mint. Plenty of power and more power to come. Paul's already planned his next two <laughs> stages of tune. But yeah, what an awesome machine. And he's lucky to have an E46 M3 as a track car. What an awesome pair of cars. I want to send a massive thanks again out to Paul and George for inviting us round. I will leave all the links in the description to George's YouTube channel and his and Paul's Instagrams. And George was telling me that he's got a dedicated YouTube and Instagram for his drumming as well. So definitely check all those out and uh, give those guys a follow. Now I've still got plenty more videos coming up where I get out, meet subscribers and check out and film their cars. But yeah, if you've got a cool car or a cool collection of cars that you wanna get on this channel, do drop me an email. My email address is always in the description of my videos. It doesn't have to be a classic Ford, although that is what I'm more knowledgeable about. But yeah, really keen to get out and meet as many people as I can and check out as many cool cars as I can during this 
period that I've decided to have a bit of a rest from working on my own cars. So that's it for this video. If you did think it was any good, please do give it a thumbs up and a share. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. If you're new to the channel, do click subscribe to keep up to date with all my future uploads and check the links in the description to my social media. I'll also leave a link to my website down there for any of you guys that want to check out my regular blog posts or support and represent the channel by getting yourself some official Marcus Hayes merchandise. And don't forget, if you need parts for your car, you can also order those through my website. And if you don't see what you need on my website, just get in touch via email and I'll source the parts that you need from one of my trusted suppliers. My email address will be in the description and a link to my Patreon. Massive, massive thanks as always to all my patrons for your ongoing support. But other than that, until next time, from me and my beautiful girlfriend Kat, thanks for watching.